General Freiburg's 2nd New Zealand Division was given the order to make a last stand at Thermopylae to halt the German advance and allow the rest of the British forces to retreat. Like the ancient Spartans that had defied Persia, it was now up to the New Zealanders and the 6th Australian Division to fight the restless German 2nd Army until no single bullet was left. As the men prepared their defenses and placed their machine guns and mortars, they saw the columns of German panzers and motorized infantry approaching the horizon. They knew it would be a brutal confrontation, but they were the only men who could stop the Wehrmacht from racing straight into the heart of Greece. Mussolini Humiliated In early 1941, most of Western Europe had fallen under the control of the Axis forces. The Wehrmacht swiftly eradicated the French army and forced the British out of the continent after the humiliating retreat of Dunkirk. Britain now stood alone against the German war machine, but the empire was still a formidable force with its vast colonial possessions in Africa, Asia, and the Pacific. Benito Mussolini, the fascist dictator of Italy, was thirsty for glory and wanted to take over the Balkans, North Africa, and Greece soon kicking off secret preparations for such military operations. Disobeying Hitler's recommendations, Mussolini then launched the invasion of Greece in October of 1940 without ever notifying his allies of his true intentions. However, despite projecting an image of military prowess that took the ancient Roman legions as inspiration, the performance of the Italian armed forces was lackluster. Other than the Alpini and Versalieri elite forces, they lacked sufficient equipment and were undertrained. The Greek forces not only stopped the invasion, but successfully mounted a counterattack inside Italian-controlled Albania in the Balkans. As if that wasn't enough to puncture Mussolini's pride and humiliate his regime, the Italian forces that invaded British North Africa also suffered several setbacks against the enemy's colonial powers. Adolf Hitler was furious, as Mussolini had not just ignored his counsel, but had brought more problems to his plans of launching the invasion of the Soviet Union. To do so, Hitler had to end the senseless conflict that Mussolini unleashed in North Africa and the Balkans. The answer to this series of mishaps was Operation Merida, the German invasion of Greece. Hitler to the rescue. In December of 1940, the Führer personally wrote a letter to Mussolini that read, quote, I wanted, above all, to ask you to postpone the operation until a more favorable season. In any case, until after the presidential election in America. In any event, I wanted to ask you not to undertake this action without previously carrying out a blitzkrieg operation on Crete. For this purpose, I intended to make practical suggestions regarding the employment of a parachute and an airborne division. Days later, the German High Command issued Directive No. 20, which contained details of direct German military intervention in Greece and the Balkans. It was codenamed Operation Merita. The mission's objective was to seize control of the northern coast of the Aegean Sea and dominate continental Greece to eradicate the British presence. The Third Reich had a good reason for doing this. As long as the British remained in Greece or the Balkans, they posed a severe threat to the Romanian oil fields under German control. Such fields were the only source of oil for the entire German military on the Eastern Front and were critical for the upcoming invasion of the Soviet Union. Moreover, Hitler and his top brass were not willing to risk the Romanian oil fields being bombed by British aircraft stationed in the Aegean. Aside from planning the invasion of Stalin's Russia, it was also of the utmost importance for the Wehrmacht to secure its southern flank, which meant getting rid of the British at any cost. Consequently, Hitler urged Bulgaria and Yugoslavia to join the Axis, but the latter, infiltrated by British spies and with Greek blood in its royal family, blatantly refused. Executing Merida. While the Germans prepared for battle, the Greek army continued fighting the Italians in Albania. Mussolini then turned to his only savior for the operation and agreed to German intervention to prevent a possible invasion from breaching straight into Salonika. The 96 mile Metaxas defensive line was named in honor of the fallen Greek leader who had recently rallied his people to fight the Italians. Four Greek divisions were established in this sector. On March 2nd, 1941, the British W Expeditionary Force arrived at the Balkans. It was led by Sir Henry Wilson and comprised the 1st British Armoured Brigade, the 2nd New Zealand Division, and the 6th Australian Division. The United Kingdom forces quickly advanced through the region and established a defensive line that went across Florina, Edessa, and Mount Olympus. 
The Wehrmacht had the 12th Army stationed in Bulgaria as a deterrent to Turkish intervention, while the 5th and 16th Panzer Divisions were ready to roll out at a moment's notice. Soon, the situation escalated with the British landings, and the Fuhrer ordered the mobilization of the 12th Army to the Yugoslavian-Bulgarian border to support his Bulgarian allies. The rest of the 12th Army forces, led by Field Marshal Wilhelm List, would storm the Metaxas Line by force. His troops comprised the 1st Panzer Group, the 40th Panzer Corps, the 30th Army Corps, and the 18th Mountain Corps. Among those units were three elite Waffen-SS regiments of the Adolf Hitler Division, led by Josef Dietrich. More than 1,900 Panzers and 1,000 Luftwaffe aircraft were ready to wreak havoc among the enemy lines. The plan was that the Heer forces would overrun the south of Yugoslavia, crush the Metaxas Line, and encircle the hostile forces. Finally, at 5.15 a.m. on April 6, 1941, the Third Reich declared war on Greece, and the German panzers began rolling into combat. Operation Marita had begun. Into the heart of Yugoslavia. The 40th Corps, under the command of Lieutenant General Georg Sturm, struck hard and swiftly on southern Yugoslavia at around 5.30 a.m. on April 6th. The rest of the 12th Army did the same across Greece and Yugoslavia in a coordinated assault. Almost simultaneously, the Luftwaffe's heavy bombers pierced into the skies of Yugoslavia and began bombing strategic objectives, including Belgrade, to force the capital into submission. While the Metaxas line was bombarded by artillery and bombers, the men from the 18th Mountain Corps, under Lieutenant General Franz Boma, began to make their way through the smoke-filled path to take control of the Greek fortifications. The soldiers from the 30th Army Corps then did the same after a preliminary bombardment that confused the Greeks. Led by General Otto Hartmann, the German soldiers advanced in two different directions to flank the Greek garrisons stationed close to the Turkish border. The first group moved towards the east, while the others marched to the west to outflank the easternmost forts and cut off the defenders from additional support. Hartmann's forces would eventually capture the towns of Komotini and Xanthi days later with minimal German casualties. The four Greek divisions initially held their ground, despite the constant artillery pounding that damaged the concrete superstructure of the Metaxas lines, but their morale soon started diminishing. The 40th Corps struggled to establish its dominance over the central Metaxas line, but the 2nd Panzer Division successfully penetrated into Yugoslavia and captured the town of Stromica on April 7th. General Sturm then sent the 73rd Division to capture Prilep and isolate the Yugoslavian forces at the border from getting additional support. But as the Greek forces in the south took notice, they fortified the town of Kilkis with more troops to avoid a typical German encirclement maneuver. Even so, the Germans kept pressing on, and the Greek Yugoslav forces prepared a counterattack to push them back. Attempting to attack. As the fighting raged on in eastern Yugoslavia and northern Macedonia, the 18th Mountain Corps attempted a second breakthrough to gain control of Fort Rupel but the troops were pushed back by the courageous Greeks. Nevertheless, the German soldiers engaged the Allied forces in close quarters combat and established a foothold near their Greek guns to destroy them. On April 8th, Yugoslav forces launched a counterattack against the 2nd Panzer Division, but failed to halt the mechanized advance. The Panzers continued moving and swiftly destroyed the Greek 19th Mechanized Division near the Doiran Lake. By April 10th, the 12th Army had breached the Metaxas Line, surrendered the Eastern Macedonia Army, taken over 58,000 prisoners, and captured the city of Salonika, which had isolated the rest of the Greek forces. For their bravery in battle, Field Marshal List allowed all the Greek officers to keep their sidearms. Meanwhile, the Greek and Yugoslavian forces launched a joint offensive on the Albanian front against the Italian army. The Yugoslav Third Army, composed of five infantry divisions, captured several villages along the Valbone River Valley. The Zetska Division, which advanced the furthest, had to retreat on April 14th after making contact with the Italian 131st Armored Division Centoro. The Italians were then reinforced by their 18th Infantry Division, which resulted in over 28,000 Yugoslavian casualties. On the other side of the front, the 40th Panzer Corps continued its advance through Macedonia, occupying Velvi and Kozani. As such, Sir Henry Wilson decided to withdraw his British W Expeditionary Force to Thermopylae to avoid being pinned down. His forces then engaged in combat with the 9th Panzer Division, which was on its toes. 
no other way. About 20,000 Allied soldiers were taken as prisoners after the clashes at Thermopylae and Albania, and the advance of the 12th Army was unstoppable. The combined assaults of infantry, armor, and aircraft decimated the Greek, British, and Yugoslavian defenses. On April 18th, the Germans engaged the Australian and New Zealand troops at the Battle of Tempe Gorge to keep control of the Piseos Gorge. The fight was tough, with heavy resistance from the Anzacs. It all ended when the 6th Mountain Division troops crossed the river on floats and flanked the New Zealanders. A day later, the Wehrmacht secured the Larissa airfield and took control of the entire British supply dump. Knowing that it was a matter of time before the Germans continued their uninterrupted advance to seize control of Greece and Yugoslavia, General Archibald Wavell, the commander of British Army forces in the Middle East, approved the withdrawal of Wilson's W Force. Meanwhile, the Greeks refused to retreat from Albania, hoping to get stronger with reinforcements from other Allied forces. General Wilson would later describe this as, quote, fetishistic doctrine that not a yard of ground should be yielded to the Italians. Allied Evacuation As expected, the Greek Epirus army was eventually cut off by the Liebstandarte SS Adolf Hitler, forcing it to retreat with severe casualties. The Italians then turned to the offensive to penetrate Greece again. On April 21st, the Wehrmacht secured more British supplies, including much-needed diesel for the German armor, after seizing control of the port of Volos. As the Allied evacuation began, Sir Wilson left the Anzacs to protect the rear flank of the troops making their way to the coast. The Allied forces clashed with the Germans on April 24th at Thermopylae, where resistance was fierce. The Anzacs held their ground for an entire day, securing valuable time for the rest of the troops to retreat. As the British forces continued retreating, they opened the way for the Germans to reach Athens, after securing more towns and islands such as Euboea. Finally, on April 27th, the Wehrmacht broke into Athens, captured the supplies the Allied forces had left behind, and went straight for the Acropolis, where they raised the flag of the Third Reich. Operation Merida had come to an end after 24 days of combat. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.